Hello, generous actors. I'm Richard Klein. Here are the top two fundamentals to succeed in your training program that they just don't talk about. Hello, everyone. So we are now at the end of November and entering the beginning of December. And for many of us, that means that a semester has just ended. Um, for those of us not in a formal school at this point, uh, it is the end of a year. So let's all take a minute, maybe pause the video for a second and reflect on all of the wonderful creative things that you've done in this year, in this fall, and, and then take some time on the projects that you're looking forward to in the spring or the roles that you're excited to play, the classes, the workshops. Um, yeah, so just kind of give yourself those couple of minutes. Cool. So today I wanna to talk about two fundamentals to succeeding in your training program. And they're not talked about by most teachers or most professors because they're not directly related to the various techniques that you will learn or to scene study, but rather they are a way, a lens from which to approach any given technique or scene study or character study or whatever it is you're working on. And they were both said perfectly by Robert Henry. So let's read what he has to say and then expand upon it a little bit. Number one, know what the old masters did. Know how they composed their pictures, but do not fall into the conventions they established. These conventions were right for them and they are wonderful. They made their language, you make yours. They can help you. All the past can help you. So what does this mean for us now? Most programs that you participate in will be either rooted in Stanislavski's work or Stella Adler, or Lee Strasberg, uh, the group theater people, uh, Michael Chekhov, and the list goes on. You get the idea. Now, to me, what makes these people so fantastic and brilliant is that they responded to the needs of their time as artists. They each changed theater in different ways based on what they found lacking or missing that they were seeing, and they investigated and changed it, and thereby changing the way that we do theater and changing the way society views itself. Now, regardless of who you study or how many of these different pedagogies you study, knowing them will absolutely serve you creatively. However, I do not think that they need to be regarded as being written in stone. I mean, even if they are written in stone, there's, there's more to write. There are more stones to write on. This means to fully embrace everything that you can learn from any of these ideologies and then to expand upon them in your own way, to make your own artistic signature. Think about it. Is it really serving theater or art or our society if we do everything exactly as it was done 90 years ago. It's beautiful to embrace, don't get me wrong. I'm not saying to disregard it, but I am suggesting that we can expand upon it and that we can grow from it rather than simply subscribing to one of these ideologies and just sort of kind of closing off our creativity and closing off possibility. So embracing, learning from, and recognizing the truths that were discovered and then continuing on to find your own truth creatively. To recap, honor the greats of the past, learn from them, extract the tools that they offer, and then do them the greatest service by continuing the investigation, seeing what is going on in your society and making the change, responding to it so that we as a people can continue to grow. Number two, an art student must be a master from the beginning. That is, he must be master of such as he has. By being now master of such as he has, there is promise that he will be master in the future. Now this is very, very, very important to you as an artist. We often go into training programs thinking that we don't have what the teacher can offer, what the program can offer. That's why we're there. We want to learn something that we don't have, get a technique that we don't have, get experience that we don't have, make professional connections that we don't have, etc. And when we go into these classes with this mindset, 
we are giving the teacher the responsibility of making us an actor or making us better or giving us the technique. And that leads to laziness as an actor. This is your craft. This is your instrument. It's your face that will be on screen. It's your body on stage. It's your voice. Take responsibility. And that means also that every experience that you've had in your life up to now, every class that you've had, every audition that you've experienced, every role that you've played, everything is absolutely your, yours to offer. And so by being a master of all of that, by taking ownership of everything that you have accomplished and then walking into a class, you will absorb the new information, the new insights, the new experiences. You will absorb all of these as a master and you will take ownership of them. And when you grow in this way, you will grow exponentially faster. You will take the driver's seat even more in your own life. And this means professionally with your career direction. And this means in other areas of life too. By taking full ownership of right now and claiming it as yours, you then get to direct what is coming next for yourself. Does that make sense? By owning everything that you have at this point, you get to decide where you are going as an actor. And you get to take more control over the kinds of roles you're going to play, where you're going to be playing them, who you're going to be working with. And I know it seems kind of contrary because we go to these auditions and we want to get the part. But just by having this mindset, you'll see the world around you will start to shift and you'll see more and more that you are in charge and that you get to choose the projects that you want to do. Even if you're not a movie star yet, you still get to choose and you still get to build in the way that you want to build your career. You will get to gain the techniques that you want to gain and you will never lose them. You will have them by having what you have now. <laughs> it sounds kind of hokey, but I promise. Try it out for a while. Reflect on everything that you've experienced, the classes that you've had, and claim them for yourself. Just inside. It's a simple thought. It's just a thought that will have an avalanche of change in the coming days, the coming semester, the next workshop, uh, whatever is next for you. And that's it. Honor the greats of the past, learn from them and expand. Take full ownership of everything that you have now. You are already a master and a master absorbs new things as a master. You're the master. Thanks for tuning in today. We'll see you next time. Please click subscribe and the notification bell to receive more insight for the training actor. Break a leg. <laughs>